In this video, we are going to add some functionality for selling our towers. Um, and this means that we will have to add a sell button to, um, to the screen. And we'll have to write some code for uh, removing the towers from the game and giving back the money to, um, to the player or giving back half of the money to the player so that um, you will lose some money by placing a tower and selling it again. Anyway, um, let's get started. So the first thing we have to do is to add the um, actual buttons to the screen. So if we go to our UI um, folder inside the sprites folder, we have a sprite folder, then we have UI down here, and then we have a tower buttons um, folder, and in here we have a sell button and an upgrade button. And of course, if you don't have the sprites, then simply make your own sprites or use some blank sprites. Okay, so this is going to be part of the canvas here. So we can start by right clicking, selecting UI and adding an image. And basically just remove the image from it. We don't need the actual image here um, be because we, we will only add the, what is it called, tower buttons to it. Um, let's see, it's right here. So if we find the image here and you see you select the um, tool to the far right, you'll see this blue square, right? So let's just make sure that the image has exactly, or this object now, has exactly the same size as the screen, or basically the same size as the screen. So this image here is going to be called Upgrade Panel. So this is our Upgrade Panel. And the reason that I'm calling it Upgrade Panel is because we are also going to use it to upgrade um, the towers. You can also call it Cell panel, panel if you want to, but I'm just going to go with Upgrade Panel. So right click on it, select UI and select a button and right click on it, select UI and select a button again. So we need two buttons here. Um, and now I put it underneath, there we go. So the buttons needs to be child objects of the upgrade panel here. So for the UI, for the sprites, we can set one to the cell button, like so. And the other one can have the upgrade button, like so. And if we look at it, you'll notice that they have a weird size. So select both of them and select set native size, like so. Then you see they will become very, very big. So we have to click on the upgrade panel. And on that upgrade panel, we will have to add something called a canvas group. So click add component, write canvas group. And on that canvas uh, group, sorry, not canvas group, I mean layout group. So if we write again and write, grid layout group sorry it's not a canvas group of course so if we add a grid layout group then we'll have to set it up so the cell size well i'm going to go with 70 times 70. that's the cell size i want want to go with and the start corner is going to be the lower left the start axis is going to be horizontal it's fine child alignment lower center and constraint I'm going to say fix column count and put it at two. There we go. Um, actually, I think I'm going to go with three because we also need the tool chip down there at some point, I think. So let's just go with three for now. So as you can see, we have the buttons down here, uh, the buttons down here. Um, right now, they're very close to the edge and they're very close together. So I'm going to say that the spacing on the X is going to be five, I guess. What about Y? If we say Phi then, no, nothing happens. Um, we can set the bottom here to five as well. There we go. So that now they're moved up a little. So if I maximize and play, I think this should look just, look just fine. Yeah, so we have the bottoms, buttons here in the bottom of the screen. And of course, they're not going to be shown all the time. It's only when we are selecting a tower. If we are selecting the bottom here, button here, we can set some things up here. Um, the color tint is totally fine and the image up here is fine, but I would like to add something to it. So you can click down here and say shadow, add some shadow to it. Uh, just get some nice effect. You can also do the same with the other one. Shadow. So now we have shadow on both buttons here. Um, besides that, we also need a price on it. Um, I'm going to leave the um, upgrade button right now not going to do anything, it's just going to be a written button on it. Uh, we will fix that button when uh, we start upgrading our towers. There's no reason to do it now. But 
if we look at the other button here, the um, cell button, let's, let's just call it cell, and let's rename the other one to upgrade, so we know which one is which. So if we select cell, we can see that the text is placed right on top of it, but we would like to have the text down here. So we have to move down um, the text. So if you select um, the movement here, the, the tool to the left here, and move the text down, you can place it inside the yellow area. And then we have to make it fit right, because the box for this, if you look, it's kind of hard to see. The box is very large here. We will need to put it, like make it smaller so it's easier for us to make it fit inside the yellow um, area here so the text will never go over the edges. So select the tool and just make it smaller. Go, just make it so that it just goes to the edges here maybe. I guess we're going to do like this. And then the size up and down can also can go to the edges here. There we go. So the left and right edges are going to the border of the yellow and the top and bottom edges are going to the border of the gray area. So let's set up this. Um, if we select the text and we say the font, well, that's Carter 1 that we're using everywhere else. Just going to use that. Um, it's going to be bold. And the font size is 14, line spacing 1, rich text is fine and paragraph alignment center and center and maybe align by geometry nope see best fit select best fit here so it fits inside the box here no matter what price is written and the minimum is 10 the maximum is 40 it's totally fine and i would like to set the color um to something like this just going to copy this one and paste it here so i'm going to use this green color here for it so it's going to have a green color and then I'm going to add an outline just because it's money then I want to make it green and I'm going to add some shadow to it now it has an outline and a shadow and you can try to write a price here you can write 10 uh, space and then dollars for example and if we play the game let's see how it looks yeah, now it's written $10 down here. And this will, of course, change when you select the tower. So if I place this tower here and select it, it should change to half of this price. So it should change to one or something, right? And besides, this panel here should not be shown unless I select the tower. There's no reason to show the panel all the time. So let's start with the easiest thing first. Let's make sure that the upgrade panel is only showing up whenever we select the tower. So select the upgrade panel and disable it here. Then open up your script, your game manager script, and find the select tower function. When you have found that, we need to, actually, we need to go to the top first, sorry. And we need to make sure that we have a reference to the panel. So write private game object, um, upgrade panel and serialize that field. When it's serialized, we go down to the select tower. There we go. And write upgrade panel. That's set active. True. And on the deselect tower, when we deselect it, we say upgrade panel set active false, I guess. Because then we are going to hide it again. Uh, let's just do it before we set it to null. Let's do it here. Yeah. So if we save this and go in here and find our game manager and make a reference to our upgrade panel, well, then when we play the game, if we select this, pick a tower here, if I select it, the upgrade panel is showing. So right now I can't sell it, but I should be able to do that later. And if I click somewhere else, it will hide itself. Okay. Well, so far, so good. So the next thing we need to do is to upgrade the text so that it reflects half the price of the tower. So we can just create a reference to the text. That's the easiest thing to do. Let's make a private game object again and write sell text or let's say price text. Makes sense. Our, no, it's not the price though. 
Cell text, sorry. <laughs> Let's just call it cell text then. You can call it whatever. I'm so bad at naming stuff sometimes. There we go. So we serialize the field and then we go down to the same function. Let's see. Uh, select tower. And down here we will have to change the text. So before we set the upgrade panel to active, let's say that our cell text dot text. Oh, yeah, okay. So I made a game object. Of course, it shouldn't be a game object. It should be text, right? So instead of cell uh, game object, let's make it into text and go back down here and say cell text dot text equals. So I would like to write a plus first because that's, yeah, whatever it's um, it's going to be, it's going to be a plus one dollar or whatever we need. And then we need to select, take our selected tower dot price. So right now we don't have a price on our selected tower. So we need to do so that, make, make sure that our tower has a price so we can save it, right? So leave this and go to the tower. And inside the tower, we will have to create a price. So let's do that in the top here. All the way to the top, let's find somewhere here and make a property and call it int price and we can get and set that price so we need to set that price uh, somewhere and the best place to yeah set that is um, basically in the tile script I guess because inside our tile script I know we're going through a lot of scripts right now so inside our tile script we have a function somewhere called place tower I think there we go so we have place tower here and we already um, have a reference to our tower and everything, right? Before we buy the tower, so we can go here and say my tower, maybe, yeah. That price equals game manager. That instance. That click button. Dot price. There we go. So we already have a price on the click button. I already set that up earlier because we we need to know what what it costs. So we take the price of the click button and add it to the tower. And later we're going to increase this price because let's say we upgrade the tower for five dollars well we need to get half of that back or let's say two dollars and we need to get half of that back so instead of selling for one we sell it for two because the price of the tower is two and the upgrade price is two which is four so half of four is two and that's why we need to upgrade this so uh, update this so we get half of whatever we spend on the tower so upgrades are not wasted if we place the tower and remove it again anyway now we have the price so we can go back to our um, game manager and say selected tower dot price, yeah, and then we can say the price divided by two to string, and that's basically it. So we take the price current price, let's say it's two, divide by two, so it's one, and then we set it to a string. Let's see what happens here. So we place a tower for two dollars, select it, and we have reference exception, of course, because we need to go to the game manager and the settle text here needs to be set. There we go. So we try again with everything set up. Select this one and click. So we gain one dollar for selling this. We don't do that right now. So if we do it like this, we gain two dollars for selling that. And what about this one? I might. Just, yeah, it's still two dollars because it rounds down, so that's fine. It's totally fine. One, two, two, one, two, two. Yeah, that's yeah, that's okay. Okay, so let's actually sell the tower. Let's go to the game manuscript, and in here we need to make a new function. If we haven't done it, no, we haven't. Let's make a new function called sell tower. Um, where do we want to do that? Yeah, doesn't matter where we do that. Make a public void sell tower and what does this function need to do well it needs to say if our selected tower isn't null so if we have selected tower well then we can say currency plus equal select the tower the price divided by two so let's see I just want to check something if we go here yeah so basically when you use currency it's very important that you actually use currency with capital C here, not this one, this, uh, 
This one will not update the text in the game, but this one with capital C will. So remember to use that. And then we say select a tower dot get component in parent child script. So the tower is a child of the tower will always be a child of a child script, right? Because when we set them do like this. Uh, let's place a tower here. So if we set them right, if you remember, we have our canvas, we have our uh, map here, and the tower will be here, a child of the tile. So we need to get component in children, or in parent, I mean. So get component in parent, tile script. Does is empty. Um, equals true. So we set that it's empty to true. And what to say, tile block cannot be used because it's access is inaccessible. Let's go to it then, go to definition. Yeah, let's remove private set. We need to be able to set it from outside now. Let's remove private set. So just the set and then go back. So we set it to empty. So now the tile is actually empty. And then we destroy the selected tower, transform the parent, that game object. So we select we destroy the yeah tower actually and then we deselect our tower so we don't have a tower anymore so we can't destroy the same one more times and get null references okay let's try to do this so now I have 98 dollars I selected and I sell the tower and nothing happens yeah because we haven't selected the cell we have we haven't told still what to execute of course so if you select cell click on that little plus here and drag the game manager down here open this up click on game manager and find a cell tower there we go so make sure cell button has selected game manager and the cell tower here so if we play again and try one more time click it ninety eight dollars one dollar plus ninety nine dollars and the tower is gone and I should be able to set towers over here again and you can see if I click here I should get 92 93 and 94 and I can place towers there again now I can't and I can sell this one and replace it with a fire tower for example and they of course still work when the monsters spawn they should still be attacking um, these So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe, like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter. Also, if you're interested, you can get the sprites for this project or any other project by supporting me on Patreon. Or you can go to the bottom link and support me on self and get one of my projects as a standalone product. So thank you very much for watching.